all right so now let's talk about a couple of different types of loops so i'm going to cover three types of loops in this video while for loops and do whiles um and so i've written here just a basic example of a program to print out all the numbers between five and ten um so i'm going to explain what this how this works and then we're going to try to translate this into a for loop because it kind of helps to see what a while loop looks like first okay so basically what i can do here is i'm going to say x equals 5 to start with. So I'm just making a counter variable that I'm calling x and I'm setting it to 5. And then while x is less than 10, I'm going to increase it and then print out whatever I increased x to be. So for example, it's going to come through and the computer is going to be like, okay, we have x is 5. It's true that x is less than 10, so we're going to hit inside this block and it's going to say x plus plus, which means increase by 1. So now x is 6, and it's going to print out x is 6. And then it's going to come through again, because x 6 is less than 10. Now it's going to come back and it's going to say, oh, time to bump it up to 7. And then it says x is 7. And it's going to keep going until it hits 10. Let's try it out. There you go. x is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Perfect. Awesome. So all, basically all a loop is, is it's a shorter way to write what we would normally do by hand. So if we wanted to print out all the numbers, between um, 5 and 10, we could type print out 6, and then uh, on the next line we could say print out 7, and the next line we could say print out 8, and it'd be a whole ordeal, because especially if you're printing like a lot of numbers, it's kind of painful. So with a loop, it's easier to do things. Um, now let's translate this into a for loop. All a for loop is, is it's a while loop in one line. So here we have an initialization where we're saying the starting value is 5, we have a final condition, which we're saying it has to be less than 10, and we have something that x is changing by. And so those are the three components that are part of a for loop. Let's try this out. I'm going to translate this into a for loop. So I'm going to say for int, I'm going to call this one i, so we can distinguish uh, which is which. i equals 5, so we see that first initialization here, and then we say semicolon, and we say i is less than 10 semicolon. So that's the next part right there. Let me say i++. Plus plus. Let me put our brackets. So there's three parts to a for loop. Um, initialization, um, end condition, and changing factor. So this is our initialization, end condition, and changing factor in that order. So it's the same thing as the while loop, just in one line. And then all we need to do here is we can copy this over. And I'm going to change this to i is i. Oops. Whoa. All right. Well, let's test this out. Awesome. So x is uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. i is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Notice with the while loop that we said int x is 5 while x is less than 10. And then we get in here. The first thing that it did when x was less than 10 was it said x++, plus plus, which means it turned it into 6, and it printed out the 6. So we actually kind of lost the 5. If we wanted to actually preserve the 5, we could move it to the end. That way it'll print out the 5 first, and then it'll update what it is. Let's try this out. There we go. Now we have the 5 and the x, so 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now we have the same result in both types. All right. And the last one is a do-while loop, which basically um, you, the syntax is do. And here you say whatever you want it to do, and then you say while... And then here you put some sort of condition that you want to run. So it'll the, the things in the do will always fire once, and then it'll check to keep going if the while condition is true. So we can say do x plus plus, and, or let's, let's make a different variable actually. Let's make this uh, j. And so we can say int j equals 5 here. j plus plus, and let's print out what j is. So j is j, then while j is less oops, less than 10, like that. So what this will do is it'll run whatever is in the do first, and then it'll be like, okay, is j less than 10? Cool. And if it is, it'll run it again, and it'll keep doing while j is less than 10. So it's kind of just a little bit of a different version of the original while that we did. Let's try it out. Here we go. All right, so we have our x's down here. I'm going to make this a little bigger so it's easier to see. All right, so we have our x's down here. 
and we have our I's, and then we have our J's. So again, this is the same thing we had before where um, we had started on the six because it came down and was like, all right, the first thing we did when we realized that it was within here was we changed, we incremented it up to six. And so if we wanted to include that five, all we'd have to do is, um, let's move it below again, like this, and let's try it out. And there we go. Now we got five, six, seven, eight, nine in all cases. So these are three different ways to get the same um, sort of results.